All right, friends, welcome to Essen, Germany. Chris Chavez and Kyle Merber here for the Saucony Fast Future 10K, our first international event together, Kyle. I'm pumped. I know. It's been quite the trip over. Not too bad. We, we made it here safe and sound. COVID tests were exactly what we wanted to see. Yeah. And now we're in Essen, Germany. Yeah, I'm super excited because tonight we're going to see professional men and professional women uh, test out the new Saucony Endorphin Pro Plus. And uh, it, the course is a little bit technical. To, so we're going to see some fast times for sure. Uh, but also, it's it's going to be real racing. And we, we just ran the community race, Kyle, not to brag, but you, you just won it. So tell us how you felt out there. Yeah, I did win. I uh, sat and kicked on the field. Uh, it was a brutal race. Some We went out hard. We settled. We closed hard. But, you know, we're here at the Zyphon World Heritage Site. And for those who aren't familiar, it is um, a world-famous coal mining town here in Essen. And this is kind of the center of it, that whole industry here. And... We are doing eight laps to, yep. to make the full 10K around the grounds here. And so it is flat, but there are plenty of turns. Yeah. And uh, it, it's a little bit technical, and I think that's what we felt when we were racing. Definitely. So what was your time? Do you want to tell I think I was uh, about 33.20, which I, I saw Jared Ward come in afterwards. He asked how it went. I said, I, I think I set a, a high bar for that course record that you need to go grab. So this course record is only going to stand for about another, what, 30 or so minutes? Because I think uh, less. They're, they're slated to, to run fast. First up, we have the women's race. Um, and one innovative thing that they're testing out here for the very first time, we've seen it on the track at Diamond League races. We've seen it uh, in some of the Trials of Miles races that we raced, uh, that we commentated earlier in the year. And it's the wave light technology, the, the lights that guide the runners to, you know, desired time sometimes, whether it's a world record or whether it's a personal best. And tonight we're going to have uh, multiple sets of lights on, in, in, in technically what's a road race here. So yeah. never been done before. They're testing it out and we'll see what happens. It, something that's very funny is, you know, we were watching them set up the lights and I, I saw one of the guys doing it. I was like, I've seen this guy before. Who is it? It was Bram Sum, the legendary pacer yeah. of the Diamond League circuit. Uh, and I guess he's the one in charge out over here setting up some of the lights tonight. So we're in good hands. Yeah. So I'm looking at the sheet right now and these are the desired uh, pace uh, paces that they've asked for. So in the women's race, which we'll have up first, the red light towards the back will be set for 36 minutes. The blue light will be set for 35 minutes. White light for 34, 15, and the green light for your leader up in the front will be set for 33, 30. And from my understanding, I believe it's Grayson Murphy who asked for that pace up in the front. Yeah, uh, you know, it's changed a lot. We had certain paces requested two weeks ago, then it went faster, then people saw the course, then they woke up feeling good. And so we're all over the place a little bit on what those pacing light times were going to be. But now it's dialed in. And there's a lot of talk about with eight laps getting out there, finding out what the course is actually like, uh, maybe running a little bit conservatively that first half and then really knocking down the pace once you're settled in. So in addition to Grayson Murphy, who just a couple months back set a personal best at the Olympic trials on the track in the steeplechase has won a couple mountain races over the past couple weeks so she's got all the range and I think like a race like this just because of how technical it is you've got some cobblestones at, at one point some hard turns you're in the dirt for a little bit uh, favors her for sure but who else are you looking out for yeah uh, you know definitely a big advantage for her so versatile as an athlete uh, I would also be watching Helen Schlaftenhofen yeah who uh, is not German. She is American, yeah. as the name uh, would maybe throw you off a little otherwise, but she feels right at home here. We were talking, we're saying like, where, where is your family from? Are they from Essen? We got to figure this out. But Helen just had an unbelievable season on yeah. the track, an Olympic trials finalist in the 1500, but then she just ran the Diamond League finals, came in fifth place there. And so Helen, um, you know, I know it's early. It's a weird part of the season in which the track season just ended starting to get back into base I'm interested to see how she does out here I think that is a very interesting component that we're going to see tonight is that there's people in different points of their season some you know someone like Melindy Elmore the Canadian marathoner has uh, 
j competed at the Olympics, took some time off, and this is like the first jolt of energy, the energy and fast running that she's going to put in uh, for some, before some fall training. Uh, Helen has taken a little bit of time off before this, and it's like this is going to be, I think, a little bit of a fartlek effort for her. But at the same time, ha that that's got a chance for her to to be up there in the in the standings. We've got the start list flashing on the screen right here. We've got Lorenza uh, Beccaria from Italy, Sarah Christensen from Sweden, Melindy Elmore, as we just said, the Olympian from Canada, Fena Frolich from Germany, Katie Holt from Great Britain, uh, Sylvia Kim, uh, Kibergi from Germany, Sylvia Mbamga Medugu from Kenya, Katharina Moller from Germany, and we've got a couple more names over here, Joe Pavey, the Olympian, and, then, and the Great Britain great. Uh, Tamara San, F San Fabio and Helen Schlachtenhofen. I think we've got a couple extra more names there that, that, that may have not flashed up immediately, but it's going to be quite the race. It's an international field, which is great. And something that's so cool about what Saucony is doing here today, in addition to just obviously having their athletes come in from all over the world, is that we have people in the industry, um, all different parts of Saucony, people who work in Europe and people who come from the US and the Boston headquarters coming together, hanging out, brainstorming ideas. But then also we have major retailers from yeah. all over the area coming in and you know they were in the community race with us earlier. And so, you know, it is a we're launching a shoe. That's why we're here. And uh, I think it's something that has always been really a big part of Saucony as the original running brand basically uh, I think it's 1898 wow. that, and so uh, is the run specialty industry they yeah. talk about it constantly we were able to sit in in all the meetings today and it is a big part and it's part of it's something that they really really value so um, we're gonna have plenty of fans out there tonight so we've got a couple of the athletes here on your screen there you got Grayson Murphy We've got some good tunes going on. We got a DJ. The, the setting here is great. A couple food trucks, a beer garden. A beer uh, garden. It is it is a fun atmosphere here in Essen, Germany. And we're going to get ready for some racing in about uh, three or so minutes here. Uh, one interesting thing to note about the Endorphin Pro Plus is that, and because we just taped the podcast with Joe Pavey earlier in the day, and for years you saw her wearing these high compression socks the entire time uh, during some of the, the races in the later stages A of her career. A trademark move. Trademark move and has decided to completely go away with it because of just the energy return that you get with these kicks. Uh, it's something that, you know, the marathoners have spoken about for a long time is that your legs feel less fatigued and less tired in those later stages of the races. And for her, you know, that beating on the body is something that she doesn't have to worry about as much. And she just had a birthday two days ago, I think turned 48 and still going strong. I'm, I'm curious to see how she does tonight. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, it. The shoe, I put it on and immediately, I, I said it was one of the best out of box experiences that I've ever had for a shoe. I put it on, first time on, went out for a workout. Not to brag, I crushed the workout. Okay. And it, it's a versatile shoe that, uh, you know, obviously all of our athletes are wearing. So we're about to get underway here very, very soon. Again, we've got some pace lights that will be helping them along the way. It is a little bit dark here as we get going with an 8.30 p.m. start time. But at the same time, for someone like Grayson Murphy, who is from the United States, it's only uh, like 12 o'clock at home for her. Yeah, you know. All but she's been in Europe the past couple of weeks. I know. Yeah. I, you know, you and I, we're fighting the jet lag here. <laughs> Grayson's been over for a few weeks, so she's settled in. Um, Something that I think is just really exciting is the atmosphere here. And look, this this isn't a course that's set up to be the fastest course of all no. time. This is supposed to be fun. And the the lights, you know, obviously dark, but the lights along the, the entire course is going to add to that atmosphere. But also the, the lights of what Siphon always has in the evening. It's yeah. really a beautiful, beautiful area. And it's loud. We've got music pumping. And it's just, it's a celebration. I'm excited to see what is about to unfold here as they get ready and head to the start line. Kyle, say goodbye to your course record. <laughs> And they are underway here in Essen, Germany. For those of you at home, keeping an eye on those lights, 
Again, green is set for 33.30, white set for 34.15, blue for 35 flat, and red for 36 flat. So you'll get, you'll see them get going here in just a second. And Grayson Murphy, as as requested, is going to be up towards the front as they head off into the night. So the the start and finish line about 25 meters apart from each other, but we do it, it kind of feels like a track race out there with the lap counter, the bell going off, the final one. Um, you know, I think as, as we watch the race, we're gonna see them in different v levels of lighting at <laughs> points. At, at times, it might be a little dark, and we'll see what happens in the shadows when they pop back out. For sure, and it's, that's exactly where some of the changes could happen. Uh, I remember towards the back during the uh, hard effort that I just put in uh, in the community race. It's not totally flat. There's a section towards the back where it dips down for a bit, uh, and it you get to ride a little bit of a downhill for about 10 seconds, and then you've got to climb for another five. But then, uh, for the most part, I'd say 85% flat. There are the old uh, railroad tracks going through the course, obviously tied to the coal mining history here at Zyphon. Um, this is probably the hardest part of the course in which you have those turns early on. There's two, just you, you turn hard to your right and then hard to your left. And then I would think that you've got about a good 600 meter stretch here where I think the, the lights are gonna be easier to stay with. So for the most part, they're going to be staying to the left of the lights. There is a section, I think, towards the uh, later portion of the race. These are 1.2 kilometer laps. Uh, it was funny for me to try and gauge like where the mile split was going to be each time around. But uh, for the most part, it, it, sometimes you have these, these races on the roads that run a little bit long. This one, exactly 6.2 on my watch. So good job by the course measuring team. So Chris, you mentioned earlier that we recorded a podcast with Joe Pavey earlier. Uh, really so fun to be able to sit down with her for 40 minutes and yeah. hear about the longevity of her career and how much things have changed in that time period. Uh, I, her mile time of 4.30 was actually set in 1997. So when you think about how much the shoe industry has changed and the, the, the technology advancement in that time period, she's someone who has really experienced it at the highest level and has also been able to be involved from an athlete's point of view in helping create that change, because these athletes here today were the, the original test wearers. Definitely, and one of the sweetest things I think that we talked about with her uh, earlier in the day when we held an athlete panel was the fact that, you know, sometimes you get into that later stage of your career and you think you're gonna hang it up and you look at, you know, what's down the road. You have a kid and you're like, oh, damn, it's such a shame that like a kid is never gonna get to see me run. But actually one of the benefits of the Super Shoes is that since it extends your career, your kids are able to see what you do for a full-time job. And that's the case uh, with Joe for sure. Um, and once again, and up towards the front of the race right now is Grayson Murphy, the 26-year-old from Utah. She's got a personal best of 32.28.09 on the track and set a personal best of 31.14 on the road earlier this year out in Utah. Something that's so cool about Grayson is how late she got into the sport. Yeah. For a long time, she was a soccer player. And she went to college, played a little soccer, decided it wasn't for her, transferred schools, and then called up the coach because for years people have been saying, you're so fast, like why are you not running cross country or track? And just asked for a tryout, walks onto the team, and was their best runner immediately. Yeah, it's, it's truly one of those stories where it's like, you know, when, when you make the argument for committing to a sport so early on or uh, diversifying that portfolio and dipping your toes in other sports, she's the perfect example of someone who has found her, uh, her calling, really, in running later on in life. But at the same time, we were talking about it earlier in the day when we were, you know, prepping and, and getting ready for this. I would not be shocked if she, when she does decide to do just a full-on marathon, 26.2, that she would put something together really, really well. How cool is this shot here? This is great, seeing them come out from that light tunnel into the darkness. You think we're in Berlin with that light show. <laughs> uh, Grayson tried 
the the traditional professional running route of just doing the roads and focusing on that after college. After she did that for a year, she just decided that wasn't really her approach. That's not how she likes to do it. She likes to be trying different things, challenging herself in different ways. And I think that mindset is part of the reason why she's been able to be able to do it all, be successful in so many different components of the sport. So one of the things about Grayson and the season that she's having, this has been quite the breakout year for her. She won the 2021 U.S. Mountain Running Championships in August in 43-21, almost three minutes faster than her other competitors. She was also uh, the 2019 U.S. and World Mountain Running Champion. She was sixth at the Olympic Trials in the steeplechase this year. I think what was fascinating about that was the fact that she ran a PR, I believe, in the semifinals and then took fifth in the, in the final. And it's one of those things going into it, maybe it was a little bit of an afterthought because of just the success we've seen from her down the line, like on the farther distances, but absolutely crushed it. Yeah, you know, today we actually were speaking and she said she loved the spike and it was excited now to get the new road shoe and she's got it all but the question was would you wear these on the trail yeah you know because the carbon plate in the endorphin pro plus you know maybe in the most technical of races she wouldn't but she said there are definitely races that she would right and that's a thing that you know kind of as as a conversation continues to sizzle with the super shoes uh it's, it's funny because we've seen it happen in the marathon, we've seen it happen on the track, and now it's starting to, you know, peter its head into the, the, the trail and ultra community where uh, there are carbon fiber plated shoes for the trails and and, uh, and the ultras. But I think one of the, the cool things that she said was that it all kind of depends on like the, the type of race. Like I'm just tr I'm trying to wonder whether you would do it at a Western States, but not at a Leadville or something like that. And so uh, it's just very interesting how this is where we are and uh, in, in the sport at this time. This part of the course here, it can get lonely out there. You yeah. know, I think we're going to see some surges as you run through the tunnel, everyone at the beer garden getting crazy, probably louder and louder as ever the laps pass by. But it, it's quiet out there, you know, like it, you can definitely get a little lost, get lonely, and that's when the pacing lights are going to start keeping you honest. So one thing to kind of also keep in mind is that while there is prize money, there's a $20,000 uh, prize purse for the men's and women's top three. Uh, there is also a little bit of a bonus that has been thrown into this race for the, uh, I believe it's the top athletes who chip away the best, the biggest percentage of their personal best. Because you know that's something that was behind the idea for this for this event was seeing if people can better their, their personal best here in this event and although the course is a bit technical there are some people who will be taking some time off of, of off their PRs for sure yeah you know I think you watch the best of the best go out and you know crush a marathon in the super shoes but they were gonna probably beat you anyway you know it, I, it's all about how are the super shoes gonna work for you and something that the people at Saucony were telling us that I think is something I'd independently said to you was they feel like shoes you know, they're just better versions. It, yeah. Sometimes you put on a super shoe and your gait feels very strange and it takes a little bit of time to get used to it. Uh, these straight out the box, whether you're running on your toes, midfoot, or heel striking, they're honestly, they're, they're comfortable for everyone. So they went through, the first lap was uh, I believe it was eight, eight. It was eight thirty-three for her on the first uh, from through the second lap. So, so still up ahead, and I believe who's in second place right now is Katarina Moller from Germany. So we've got uh, a battle of some early twenty-year-olds in, in the top two right now. The German trying to chip away at, at, at Grayson's lead and going with her in, in that green light group to get the win in front of a home crowd. A lot can change over the course of 10K. I know in my own race, uh, the, the guys who went out hard came back to me. And so I think as people get more and more comfortable with the course, they are going to maybe start taking more chances. Something to note as well, though, is the temperature right now is perfect. This is, there's no wind. We were saying that they're probably uh, two, three weeks ahead of us into fall here in Germany. And it's a, a nice chill. We're very comfortable in sweatshirts. Woke up this morning. It felt like cross-country season, didn't it? 
It did. I think this is the perfect weather to run fast. The course is just what throws a couple uh, wrenches in some of my personal plans for the day. And I misspoke that it's Katie Holt, uh, Kate Holt, who's in second place right now. Uh, great British athlete. It's a, it's a little dark out there, Chris. No one will hold it against you. Someone else, you know, we were talking about Joe Pavey's longevity and five Olympics. Yeah. Another athlete whose story I think is just absolutely fascinating is Melinda Elmore. So she qualified for the, the Olympics in 2004, goes, competes, decides to hang it up and retires from the sport for a while, comes back to it, and last year she qualified for Tokyo, 16 years later, yeah. for her second Olympic team. I thought it was, it was an awesome story. And then it ends up finishing top 10, right, in, in Sapporo? Yeah, yeah, I think she was ninth, because I believe her husband was also, uh, had finished ninth, I think in the 1500 back in 2004. And so, uh, you know, they both have that to their name. Uh, pretty amazing. So it, that, it is a very interesting case with, uh, with her because she was someone who ran and qualified for the Olympics I believe in 2019 late as an unsponsored runner. And then at that time, you're sort of at the liberty of being able to wear whatever it is that you want. She chose to do her own research in the in 2020, of course got afforded a couple extra months due to the pandemic and the Olympic postponement, do her research and see what the best options were out there for her. And you know, when you do all the tests in, in the lab and, and in performance centers and sports research centers, she decided that, you know what? The shoes that Saucony has right now are right up there with some of the, the other companies that, that, that are big players in the, in the running space. And so she felt confident enough. She's like, you know what? I'm going to sign that contract and, and see, make the most of it. And she clearly has with, with that performance at the Olympics. Yeah. And, you know, the Pro Plus, it's, it's brand new. A lot of these athletes just received them recently. I got my pair this week. And it's going to be available to everyone very, very soon. I believe the drop is on September 28th, so right around the corner. There is a link in our YouTube bio yeah. that if you're interested, you can go check it out. And something that I thought was so fascinating is they're not making many of them. No, I think there's only 6,000 pairs, and when they're out, they're out. So it's a little bit of like, you know, they have, they have the hype beast drops sometimes, where there's no restock, it's out, and if it's sold out, you missed out, and I'm sorry. There's 6,000 pairs, but I think we've got, you know, at least a couple hundred here, so. Uh, a hot commodity for sure and a special edition so if you enjoyed the first version this one is not only that sleek white but it's just it's a lighter version that upper really really sock like so there's Grayson Murphy up towards the front with Katie Holt right on her heels as they come around and complete the fourth lap just under 12.30, I believe, and a reminder, these are 1.2K laps. So Grayson continuing to stay right with the lights, hugging it comfortably. Looks very comfortable at this pace. Her form is very composed. She's actually, it looks like, almost a step ahead of the, the pace lights now. Yeah. So feeling great right now. Those pace lights up in the front set for 33.30. Now, again, kind of thinking about a little bit of the race within the race with just yourself, one of the people who might end up cashing out here in, in this hard effort uh, could be Helen Schlockenhoven because I believe her personal best is listed as like 37.10 or 37.14 because, you know, she's crushed it on the track this year. Uh, fifth at the Olympic trials and then went on to uh, tear, uh, went on a complete tear during the Diamond League. So she, she's got a chance here to really uh, cash out with that bonus possibly if she ends up with a good 10K PR. Grayson Murphy up in the front at 12.29. Uh, Katie Holt right behind her. And then we've got Madugu from Kenya, seven seconds behind. Melindy Elmore, nine seconds behind. Joe Pavey back in seventh, 32 seconds behind. Katarina Moeller, 43 seconds behind, and just on uh, 
Joe Pavey's heels. I love that graphic. I know you're a big Formula One guy, but especially on a course like this, uh, you, sometimes you'll see it on the track, and it's like, well, I see everyone. There's yeah. no problem. I know how far behind everyone is. But in a race like this, super helpful to get an idea of where the race is unfolding besides just the leaders. I mean, we saw a little bit of it, too, during the, the broadcast of the Olympic trials uh, when the, the, the bibs have the chip that can tell you the distance between people. Uh, and so while it's not as high tech here, uh, it is really cool to see that gives you an idea of what that distance looks like and what it actually is in, in terms of the time. Katie Holt has represented Great Britain in uh, the 1500 and in cross country. I'm looking at an article right now where she says that I started running as a joke, and now she's one of the most promising athletes for Great Britain. And it's one thing that we were talking about with Joe Pavey is just like the constant step, it's the step up that, that, that the Great Britain is taking on the track, especially. We saw how many medals they came away with, with uh, Keely Hodgkinson, Gemma Riki, Laura Muir, all running super well, that it's inspiring to see kind of like that Yes, they had that awesome 30 minutes with Mo, Greg Rutherford, and Jessica Ennis in 2012, but it's only getting better as time goes on. Yeah, I mean, look, if you want to keep making teams, then you have to keep getting faster if that's what everyone else is yeah. doing. And it, once you see other people doing it, then you realize what is not only necessary, but what is possible if you're going to remain competitive. The sport is constantly evolving. And so, uh, yeah, Rise Tide definitely lifting all boats over there in the UK. Grayson Murphy now starting to get a little bit of a lead and they've picked it up because those green lights are just a couple uh, steps behind them. So they're going faster than 33-30 pace. My record is going to get broken, I think. I think so, Kyle. <laughs> Sylvia Bonga Medigu from uh, Kenya is in third place right now. And was that Melindy in fourth? Is it third or fourth? Yeah. Grayson Murphy, still your leader, trying to take this thing wire to wire as they complete lap five of eight. This is the point during the community race where I thought to myself, I was like, I've done five laps. This is a 10K, right? Six miles. It should be six laps. Uh, no, there, you've got a couple extra to go. Eight is such a strange number for this one, but it worked out. It was very difficult to quantify in my head. You know, I, I generally would break out a 10K in 1Ks or yeah. miles, and the 1200 meter loops definitely threw me for one extra because it, it, you get lost, and you know, hopefully that uh, the laps to go is illuminated at the, the finish yeah, line for the athletes because I, I got lost out there. For the people wondering at home, Kyle only laughed me once. Melindy Elmore hanging tight there in the battle for third place. Melindy Elmore's personal bests are 33.08.66 from the track and 32.44 on the road. Five time Canadian national champion including that 2019 marathon title that qualified her for the games. So we got a small gap starting to open up a little bit there. Grayson, I think, is starting to gain some confidence and leaving those green lights in the dust. It really does help put things into perspective. As we look at the standings after lap three, as they flash on the screen there for just a sec, we'll get them back up shortly. After lap four, Grayson Murphy and Katie Holt up in the front. Madugu and Melindy Elmore 19 seconds back. Christensen 31 seconds. A little bit of a gap there in no man's land with Pavey about 24 seconds behind her. Hopefully she can claw her way back up into that battle for third because you don't want to run a lot of this too solo. Sarah Christensen of Sweden there in fifth place. She's had a really good summer. She has set personal bests in the 800, in the 1500, the 5K. She ran 34-20 for a road 10K PR at the Swedish National Championships where she finished third. 
and uh, you know she's fit right now. She just had won a 5K in August, and so what a range running the 800 early in the season, and now all the way to the 10K. Grayson Murphy pressing on. What a shot right there. Leaving those wave flights in the dust right now. You know who the real heroes are? Are the, the fans who went out to the darkest part of the courses, as far away from the beer garden as possible to cheer our athletes on. Well, there's another beer garden back there too. Is but there? I don't know if it's open right now. The secret beer garden. Well, I looked at it multiple times during the race and I thought you I was going to peel over to the side and just stop. I really think that you should have done a, a beer 10K and had to have one every lap. Kyle, I wouldn't be able to commentate right now <laughs> if we did that. But then you'd have an excuse of why I almost lapped you twice. Yeah. Sarah Christensen, I think, uh, in no man's land right now. You see that flow right there. We'll get to know him. Oh, we know him well. Race. And his brother right behind really him. Really inspiring story coming up. There's, There's Jared, Jared Ward peeking onto your screen. You know what we could have done with the runners? Just give them a little, some glow sticks around their wrists so we could see them when they're that actually been totally cool. in the shadows. Grayson Murphy completes lap six in the lead. So Just under 21.40, or 20.40. So their, their recent laps have been about four flat, which for 1,200 is 5.20 mile pace. And it does seem like they are continuing to pick it up, wind it, winding down the pace. And as Grayson is starting to make this move, Katie's right there. Like, you know, that gap isn't actually growing too much, far, too much further apart from it was when it initially happened. Grayson Lee is growing a little bit. I wonder what her strategy has been. What would you have done if you were in her shoes right now leading? You sat and kicked, but if you're trying to win this race from the front, where would you have put your foot on the gas a little bit more? I, you know, when I had run it, it was light out. Yeah. And I, it seems ridiculous, but I think at one of the dark corners, you come out of that corner real quick and you make a hard surge. Maybe they don't even realize that you put that distance on them until you come back into the light, and then all of a sudden you look up and there's it's grown. Yeah. I do think you also need to be careful. There's some, some of these corners where there's a little bit of dirt and you, you might, you try and hold on uh, and not slip. The corner right there that they just yep. came through. Um, probably the hardest part. This one, yeah. Uh, no, that's the third. So it's kind of three ones in a row, but the, the first and the second, they put some timing mats down after our race. They asked us, hey, what would you think of the course? You know, are those turns hard? And I was like, because uh, some of the other ones did have timing mats. I was like, get two more, put them down. So they're, you know, I'm just saying that if Grayson runs a little faster than they, <laughs> it wasn't the same course. Joe Pavey, a lap behind right now, but still doing some work. Off in the distance behind them is Helen Flockenhoff. We had such a fun athlete panel this morning with the athletes. The athletes actually have had a really long day. Yeah. We saw photo shoots happening as well. They were, you know, chatting up with all the retailers and the brand people from across the world. Uh, but we had an opportunity to sit down with them on stage in front of a big audience and ask them basically anything that we wanted, <laughs> which was a really cool experience. And I feel like we could have done that probably for two hours. Oh, definitely. And still taking some good questions from, from the audience as well. Grayson Murphy is your clear leader right now. As Katie Holt tries to hold on in second place. I'm looking at some of the PRs here uh, for Katie Holt. She's run 209 for the 800, 428 for the 1500. The longest race I see on record is a 27.30 for five miles. Uh, so this is definitely a step up in distance. Grayson, you know, uh, the U.S. mountain running champion earlier this year, she won that race, which is was only a 43-minute race. It wasn't like some huge ultra marathon. She won that race by over three minutes, which is seems like quite a margin. Her most recent result was the Desert News Marathon 10K. 
where she won in 31-14 at altitude. These laps start to feel like they're getting a little bit longer come the yeah. sixth one. Grayson Murphy on a tear right now. Chris, we were speaking to a lot of the athletes about you know their favorite shoes to train in, uh, in addition to obviously the Pro Plus. 24-42 through lap seven for Grayson Murphy. I know uh, you're a big Triumph guy. Yeah. What what were some of the other athletes wearing? Like, wh so we've seen Parker rocking the Kinvaras a lot in the past. Uh, and I'm trying to think what, what some of the other ones were. But for me, I definitely loved the, the Triumph. And I saw a couple other people uh, rocking the Triumph uh, throughout the press conference. It's my easy, easy day go-to shoe. Really comfortable. I know the ride was really popular amongst Durable, a lot of the athletes. Yeah. yeah. Grayson Murphy, your leader right now. Again, her personal best is 32-28 on the track and 31-14 on the road set earlier in the year. We will get a list of your of the standings very shortly as the runners continue to pour in and complete lap six. Grayson Murphy has a four second lead on Katie Holt. Melindy Elmore, 39 seconds back in third place, has now kind of secured that spot as Madugu is now fourth, about less than 10 seconds behind her. Christensen has the ability to come back here, I think, and try and snag into that top, uh, top four. It's gonna have to do a little bit of work if she was in absolutely alone for a bit. But we're in lap seven. This is where, like, in, during a 10K, I was able to find a little bit of a second win. And again, I think that kind of goes to the point of the super shoes. It's the fatigue. At some point, you know, maybe a couple years back, I would have been totally dead at that point. But your, your legs do recover. You've, you've got a little bit of a wind in it, in you. You find that second win in the gear, and you go. We were talking about how some of the super shoes that exist out there, you put on, it takes a little bit to get used to. They, they maybe change your gait in some way. But what happens in a lot of shoes that are, you know, is different than my experience in racing in the Endorphin Pro Plus is that you kind of get fatigued in weird areas in some of them, you know? Like you get in these super shoes and you're not used to them and all of a sudden your quads, because you've been bouncing like you've never bounced before, are the first thing to go. And for sometimes it's the calves or your hamstrings. And my experience in Dorfman Pro Plus and one of the benefits of you know, wearing them out there was that the fatigue was normal fatigue. <laughs> it was what I was used to, it was what I was expecting. It wasn't like, oh, my calves have gone, I'm not used to this. And again, this was my second run that I've ever done and then I did a workout the yeah. other day. I did do an easy run yesterday and then warm again today. And I mean, generally you wanna break in shoes a little bit. I've had no problems. So again, to kind of like you and I have spoken, and it was something that we brought up in some of the meetings that we've had this, you know, over the past couple of days, where it's just sort of this is a shoe that it's like, yes, there's something that works for, for the pros, and you're seeing it here on display, but for the everyday runner like ourselves now, like it, 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 it is great out of the box, and you're good to go. I'm planning on wearing it possibly in Chicago, I think. I really got the idea that I was uh, part of the community run today when I, that, you know, my outfit, the shorts that they gave me were not the elite. I did not get this <laughs> outfit. Not you know, that I would look that good in this one. But I got, I got the long community shorts. Grayson Murphy looking at her watch, really pressing on because they have left the green lights behind. I think, it, you know, we, we were speaking to some of the athletes about how it's kind of almost like a fart look out there. You yeah. are accelerating and decelerating. There are certain points in the course where it's like, this is a fast, straight away. Let me make the most of it here. Grayson Murphy heads into the final lap as your leader, 27-46. 
So with one lap to go, she's been running just a hair over four minutes per 1200. And I think Katie Holt is 20, about 29 flat. That sub 33 is very much in sight. She still looks very strong. Her form, if anything, has only gotten more efficient as she's picked up the pace. Was that a lap split that you saw there, 404? Does that make sense to you? It makes sense to me, yeah. I'm not good with 1200 splits, Kyle. 1200, four flat is 80s. Oh. The crowd here is absolutely electric. Everyone's having such a good time. And if you're concerned about crowd size or anything of that like, everyone in attendance uh, had to show proof of vaccination and we got negative uh, COVID tests from everyone. This makes it sick. We love those numbers. I said, did anyone test positive? And they're like, you wouldn't have known. And like, they would have been with everyone else right now. One of the things that a lot of the athletes spoke a lot about on that panel was the ability to be a part of the Saucony family and feel like they are an individual whose input matters to what the brand is doing. And uh, I, I just think it's so cool to be here and be able to meet everyone. If we look at these standings, Grayson Murphy has an eight second lead, not insurmountable. So this race isn't over yet. Melinda Elmore sitting comfortably in third, 49 seconds back of Grayson. Uh, Madugu and Christensen have found, them, or found themselves now in a battle for fourth and fifth. So that is your top five right now in, in the final lap, 30 minutes into the Helen race. hasn't yet gone through the finish line one last time, so we don't know exactly how far back she is. But she was our favorite to maybe be the percentage improvement upon her yeah. 10K personal best. And I think that eighth slot would probably put her in that area where, you know, she's very much in that conversation. Yep. So we hit the 31 minute mark here. We should be done with this in less than two minutes. The final turn, the way you come off it before you hit the straightaway, that is a tough, tough turn. And so you kind of want to start your kick early. Yeah. Because if, you will lose a lot of momentum with about 150 meters to go. We've got two women way ahead of the Wavelight Technologies green lights. They were set for 33 flat. This is a great race for Katie Holt. Her personal best is 33.15. Okay. That's very much, it's going to be close. She's going to have to, you know, Which, yeah. dive at the line maybe to get that. But it, for her to potentially run 33.15 or faster here would be such a strong result. And there's a chance that Grayson dips under her track PR, which is 32.28. So we'll find out very shortly. Ooh. It's going to be a little bit over. She looks strong. She's been in Europe over the past couple of weeks, and it's all paid off. Lots of racing. Here's that, this, she calls it a that hard final turn, and now she's got probably 150, 200 meters to go. I think she's going to be able to get under 33, but we're going to see it's going to be tight. As Grayson goes into the shadows, we're going to see her shortly from the finish line. Once the crowd finally sees her winding through the here forest. A second. Emerging uh, from the darkness. With the lasers in the background, this is a party. It's going to be a nice celebration. She runs through the start line, the finish line well in sight. Is she going to be able to dip under 33 minutes? And yes. Under 33. So Grace cool to do that. Is your fast future 10K champion, Katie Holt. In Gets under place. her own personal best, broke that 33.15 mark. Now, as the race is strung out, we did have a battle for third place here that we'll find out very shortly who comes out on top, whether it was Christensen or. Sylvia. Grayson was already a bit of a celebrity amongst uh, everyone here after this tonight. Not that she was ever going to have to buy one from the beer garden, but now definitely not. Kyle, all the beers here are free. What? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
And there is Lindy Elmore. Third place He's finisher. Sarah Christensen, fourth place, about 3405. She closed really strong. I'll tell you, after a little break post the Olympics, pretty solid showing. Really strong start for her. I saw there in fifth place was Sylvia Medigu. All of these uh, Tokyo Olympians who competed in the marathon bouncing right back into racing are, are superheroes. Look, there. Oh, Molly Seidel was, was back racing within a week. There's a there's a, an element in which you don't actually lose that much fitness in taking two weeks off, but now you all of a sudden you have fresh legs. <laughs> Sometimes, and we're going to see it in the men's race, some of the athletes are in the middle of heavy marathon training yeah. right now. Even though you may be fitter, you may actually run slower during those times of the year. So uh, coming off, starting up again, she has fresh legs and some leftover fitness from the Olympics. We've got a couple more women pouring in here. I think we're really waiting to see if Helen is able to steal the bonus for the PR. You take a look at some of uh, you know, the older athletes like Melindy and Joe, and they have really strong 1500 yeah. personal bests. And so sometimes you look at some of these younger athletes like Helen, who are competing very well in the 1500 today, and you wonder, what it, what's their future going to yeah. be like in the marathon? You don't know. Maybe in 20 years, we're looking back and telling, hey, did you know Helen was actually quite the 1500 meter runner back in the day? And the thing is, as a 1500 specialist right now, the last thing you want to hear is that, hey, you're going to be a great 10K runner. Someday. Yeah, Helen, don't do too well out there. <laughs> you won't like what happens. And we're going to get an opportunity at some point to hopefully speak with Grayson and hear about the race from her perspective and how it felt out there. That reminds me, I have to go conduct that interview, so I will be making my way to You're leaving. the interview area. Hold it down, Kyle. Hold it down. I think you'll still be able to speak. Yeah. There's Helen, who gets 36.15, I believe, so it chips a minute off of the time that she was seated at. As those athletes finish up their races here, the fans are still giving the cheer on. Again, a lot of the people here are not just with Saucony, but some of the most major retailers across the world and uh, bring them in, tell them about all the exciting plans that Saucony has. Saucony very much uh, into the grassroots, the, the run specialty industry, always trying to support that side, uh, something that I've spoken to in the past is the idea of kind of trickle down shoe nomics is what I call it. And you see athletes running really fast here and it, it's an endorsement of the product. It really does make a difference. And as those in the run specialty world see it and you know, those of you watching at home and watching this YouTube stream or watching these athletes and hearing them speak about the shoes, then it, it's a, it's, it legitimizes the product. It lets you know that it works. If we can see Grayson Murphy run under 33 minutes on uh, a course like this in the new Endorphin Pro Plus, then uh, that will translate to your own running. And we've got so many marathons this fall. I'm sure many watching at home here are getting ready for whether it's the Boston Marathon, New York, Chicago, London, uh, all the marathon majors, Berlin, I think Tokyo just went virtual, unfortunately, but uh, there's uh, so many options out there, you know, what shoe do you wear? And the Endorphin Pro Plus now very much an option. And if you are interested in checking out a pair in the link in our bio, they are dropping on September 28th. There's going to be less than 6,000 pairs available. So uh, quite the hot commodity. I expect those to sell out in almost no time, maybe even before September 28th comes. And uh, so definitely consider grabbing yourself a pair. See what all the hype is about. Um, I, I personally am loving them and they work. They're working well for these athletes here. And shortly we will be having the men coming in in about 12 minutes, they'll be stepping up and it will be their turn. We saw them warming up, cheering on the women during their race. 
the likes of Jared Ward, Parker Stinson, Brian Schrader, Samuel Fitwe. Some really, really strong athletes here. Chris is out trying to locate Grayson Murphy. Our winner, and you see her now on our screen, the final results, Grayson Murphy, the United States 32-54. Katie Holt, if you do the math, you crunch those numbers. It looks like a 33.07 for her. Melindy Elmore was third, the Canadian. Sarah Christensen of Sweden was fourth. Sylvia Medegu of Kenya, fifth. Lorenza Beccaria was sixth. Joe Pavey, seventh, and in eighth place, Helen Schlaftenhofen, who looks like she ran uh, a very nice personal best. Ninth place, Katharina Moller from Germany. Tamara Sanfabio from Spain. Fena Frolich from Germany. So that is our top 11 here as we are getting ready. The men are doing their final stride out, getting prepared for them to go live here on the Sidious Mag YouTube channel, uh, 10 minutes or so. So please take the opportunity. If, uh, so if you've enjoyed the show so far and running. you got excited to watch that women's race, then consider sending that link on to someone as the men are up next. Grayson was able to finish ahead of those pace lights in the women's race. And the men's race, that green light up front is going to be set at about 29 minutes. Uh, I think the plan is to stay with it for about the first half and then hopefully run away from it. Chris is out there looking for Grayson Murphy right now. We've had a great time here in Essen, Germany. We are at the Zeifen, which is the World Heritage Site. Very, very beautiful, famous coal mine, uh, really the center of the industry here. Still this part of the country in Germany, a huge sector, uh, huge in the energy yeah. sector. Uh, it's been really cool, both Chris and I's first time here, and it's been wonderful. The running's actually excellent. Uh, seems like there's plenty of bike paths that go for miles. So if, if you ever want to run around the coal mine, you can definitely do that, but also there's plenty of other options. Chris is still running around looking for Grayson, trying to find her. She uh, really ran away from the field there in the second half, looking very poised strong, coming off the some trail races mountain, now getting out here running a, a kind of a technical 10K road race. She looked very, very strong in the new Endorphin Pro Plus, which again, this is why we're here. And I think it's just such a cool way to launch a, a new product to uh, get everyone really excited about it, an opportunity to test it out for yourself out in the wild. And there, you know, there's over $20,000 in the prize purse. But in addition to that prize purse for the, the, the top three in each the men's and the women's race is also the percentage difference between your previous personal best and how much you improved here tonight. You can see all of the, the fans and the, the good people of Saucony going out right now, taking a break between the, the two. The running, the, we have tons of food trucks. We have uh, lots of different beers from Germany to try. And uh, it's a real party atmosphere here. We've seen this at other races. Um, you know, in the UK, they have the night of the 10K. And it's, it just makes it so much more fun when you get the opportunity to kind of have a, a little bit of a, a party and, you know, track, I think the 10K especially, it's so, it's, it's a, a distance that allows spectators to kind of sit back and relax. It's not just a snap of the fingers and it's over. There's plenty of time to really break the race down and get to know the athletes and tell their stories. And so, you know, I think for the fans here who are hanging out, a really cool, opportunity to enjoy the the racing while also just getting to meet different people from all around the world and chat with them about 
how they're feeling after we all ran the community race earlier. And now the women have done it and short and sweet, the men are up. And I just received word that Chris has located Grayson and they are getting set up now for an interview as she catches her breath. Take a moment to say thank you to Saucony for inviting Sidious Mag out to cover the race here in Essen, Germany. We've had a great time and any opportunity that we ever have to bring more content to fans uh, is one that we are going to jump at, uh, especially you know, using YouTube and being able to stream this live for free, hopefully getting more eyeballs on the sport. And there you see on the screen, uh, 9.20 local time, uh, the men will be up for their Saucony Fast Future 10K. All right, I think All right, we've located Grayson Murphy, our women's race winner, and she is down with Chris Chavez to talk about her experience here. All right, we are here with Grayson Murphy, the winner of the Fast Future 10K. Grayson, how was it out there? I mean, you got to test out the shoes, the course was a little tactical and, and crazy, but you got it done, came away with the win, and you buried the wave light technology. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a really cool concept to be out here at night. I've never run a race in the dark before, so that was fun, and the shoes are amazing. Um, they felt like a little less tactical than the mountain races I've been doing, so that was nice. <laughs> so, so update a couple people at home, like what what the past couple months have been like since people saw you competing at the trials, coming away with a you know was it fifth at the in the steeplechase, sixth in the final. Uh, so what have you been up to? You've been on a string of races now. Is this finally like the last one on the calendar and that's some downtime, or where are you at in the season? Yeah, you know, I was hoping it's been um, a little mini mountain season up to this point. So I've done three mountain races the last three weeks, so that was fun, but a lot. Um, and now Team USA gets to go back for Nations Cup uh, end of October in Italy. So I think that'll be maybe my last. And then I'll take a little reset before we gear up for track in the spring and um, more mountain and cross country. So Kyle and I were talking about this on the broadcast is that with all the different types of shoes that you have to use for, you know, trails and longer stuff and roads and the track, I guess give give the people at home, I guess, a taste of what that rotation looks like. What do you use for your, your shorter stuff, recovery runs, workouts? What does that look like for you? Okay, yeah. Um, so for the trail, my go-to is the Peregrine. I typically race in the Peregrine. Um, the Canyon is like a hybrid road trail shoe, so sometimes I wear that for some easy runs. The Ride is my go-to road shoe, really comfy. Um, these are my go-to road shoe. And then on the track, uh, Spikes or these. Honestly, I wear these on the track too, so yeah. So wh what's next from here on out? You know, with me, who knows? <laughs> it could be anything, but more more mountain, more track, more road, so. And the people are wondering, the marathon. I mean, when are you thinking of giving that a try? It's, it's fall marathon season, that's where a lot of people's uh, training is at right now, but what about you? I would love to run the marathon eventually, so um, not this year, but in the next couple of years, I would love to do that. I yeah. think you're keeping us on our, on our toes. The patience is gonna pay off. Grayson, congratulations on the win today, and enjoy the, the beer garden, the food truck. This, the atmosphere is gonna be fun. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Back to you, Kyle. That was great to hear a little bit from Grayson after that victory that she had here. The men are getting ready, gearing up. Stay tuned. They will be live on the Sidious Mag YouTube channel for free. In just two minutes, they're going to be going off for the Saucony Fast Future 10K. And if we're going to take a look at that start list here, 
We have Jonik Arbogast from Germany, Emil Blumberg from Sweden, Donovan Christian from France, Yannick Dupic from Germany, Samuel Fitwe from Germany, Ash Harrell from the Great Britain, Leonard Jordan from Germany, Tom Erling Carbo from Norway, John Kingstead, who I believe is actually from Sweden, and Otto Kingstead, also I believe Sweden, Osama Lunex, Germany, Dougie Musan, Great Britain, Brian Trader from the United States, Mael Seacott from France, Carl Smith from Great Britain, and Parker Stinson from the US, Simon Sundstrom from Sweden, Youssef Tausi, Spain, Pacom Tubo Lopez from France, Andreas Vota from Austria, and Jared Ward from the US. So uh, a few athletes extra there. Uh, and now I'm told Chris has someone else with him in the studio. Who do we have, Chris? All right, yeah, we're, we're live on YouTube here with Melindy. Melindy, we've got like literally a minute right before uh, the men's race starts, but the people at home, we got to show some love to our Canadian viewers who definitely tune in. So how's everything post-Olympics coming out here? This is a little bit of a shock to the body right after that, right? Oh yeah, this was uh, first hard effort in six weeks and, and I heard a bit, but it was, a, you know, the good kind. Oh, they're, ama they're amazing. So like uh, for you, I guess the, the Olympic experience and coming out here, like what's what's next? I mean, you've had such a long career. Like, have you started like thinking about? I guess the race is about to start. Like, what's what's coming up? Next? Well, I'm hoping to do another marathon later this year, um, and then just keep running, running, having fun. Yeah, like this. Awesome. All right, we got the the men's starts going on. We'll send it right back to Kyle in the booth. Sorry. Are off in the. Fast Future 10K here in Essen, Germany. I love the 10 second countdown to the start of the race. A little different than you'd maybe see in a track event. The men are just a couple steps ahead of that green wave light technology, which is being set for 29 minutes. Brian Schrader, Sam Fitwe, and Jared Ward look to be our front lead pack. Kyle, I'm back. I just ran uh, from five meters from the uh, from the interview zone. I'm sorry I sprung that last interview on you as a surprise. No, I had, to, I had to show our Canadian viewers some love. I actually, you know, I, I wasn't able to even hear it, but it looked like everyone was having a good time. It was a good time, yeah. Nice short catching up with, with Melinda Elmore, but here we are with the men's race, and I'm excited for this one especially uh, because I think we've got here. Keep an eye on Parker up here in the front because we talked about this in the lead up to the race, he said he's doing a workout, but knowing the way Parker Stinson operates, like the competitiveness is going to get him at some point. I and called it, it. It looks like he's got the itch right now. You know, Chris, he is racing the Boston Marathon very soon. This is yeah. one of his big final tune-up workouts. And he was speaking with his coach, Dathan Ritzenhine, about what, what am I allowed to do? How hard am I allowed to push in this? And it was kind of like a negotiation going on. I'm sure Dathan is watching this right now, hoping that he does as he's instructed. Uh, and he's supposed to hold back because he's actually going to run it again after about a 10 minute float jog as recovery yeah, that's that's where i was like all right so if he hypothetically had found a way to win this race and then he has got the 10 minute float is that, does that require one of us to go and jog with him but uh it sounds like there's going to be three other guys brian schrader sam Fitwe and uh jared ward who are actually going to be going up with the front group and, and duking it out so uh I don't think we have to worry about jogging with Parker after this race. I can definitely see Parker getting competitive and starting to mix it up. Uh, something that was so funny was today when we were speaking with him on the athlete panel. He, he encouraged everyone, like, please, when I'm doing it all over again 10 minutes after, come out and cheer for me. I need that encouragement probably more during that second 10K than maybe the first. He was telling me also before that there's a chance he might run the course backwards to see if like there's any sort of difference. But uh, this is the fast way for sure. And so now the men hopefully had an opportunity to speak with uh, not only the community racers like ourselves, but the women and get a little bit of insight into that course. But naturally, they you're not going to have a good feel for it after uh, you know a warm up jog. You're going to need to be running one or two laps to get an idea of uh, how to take those turns, where the tangents are, uh, where the little 
inclines and declines are, what are, pick your spots. Where do you really have to buckle down and focus, but also where are the opportunities to really open it up and drop that pace a little bit? Towards the back, the man with the mane, the, the, uh, the long flowing locks. Kyle, fill in the viewers as to who that is because we got to know him yesterday and he was a hoot. Yeah, so that's John Kingstead uh, from Sweden. Uh, a very popular podcaster over there, uh, but he, he also a big fan of the Sidious Mag podcast. And he uh, he said his nickname is Swedish Jesus, or they just call him Jesus. To us, he's Swedish Jesus, uh, known for that long hair. But he's actually a 217 marathoner. Like he is not just a podcaster; he is quite the runner himself. And he is actually helping out his brother here this evening. Um, he does want to win. I, I want to say that. But his brother Otto, who's most likely sitting right on him, is uh, going for the world record for a deaf athlete for the 10K, which is 30.06. So we're going to keep he a holds very, it. he holds it himself, but we're going to keep a really close eye on Otto. Uh, I know John doesn't want to lose to his younger brother, though. It was something interesting to, to learn about that when we were having a conversation with him as to how the, uh, the deaf community is separate from, from the Paralympics. They've got their own uh, sort of Olympic Games that are taking place next uh, summer in Brazil. Uh, and so he's gearing up and trying to get ready for that next year. So we're going to definitely be checking in on the two of them throughout the evening. But right now, up front, that lead pack, <laughs> Chris Parker, he's doing it. Dathan Ritzenhine, if you are watching, <laughs> shut off your computer right Save now. Save yourself. This is not what you want to see. <laughs> But for the soccer fans, <laughs> this is what they want to see. Look, uh, you get involved in all this energy here. You've got everyone from the soccer brand cheering you on. You know, you got to put on for your city, which is tonight, Essen, Germany. Yeah, we are Essen. It's already, it looks like they're taking a, you know, a, running away from that green light. And there was a lot of discussion in both the women's and the men's race about what type of time are we looking at. Uh, we'd heard everything from 28.30 to 29.30 at different points. And so uh, it was settled on 29 flat. Uh, and then once, it, once you no longer see it, it can't help you anymore, but you hope to never see it again. One thing that was interesting was that, that Sam Fitwe beforehand had said that like he's going to play the first half a little bit conservative and then try and kick things down. But we're seeing a little bit of the opposite here where he's the one pushing the pace from, from the front. And so that kind of changes things a little bit. So they were about 28-40 pace through that first lap. So uh, they're, they're keeping it honest. Uh, they're, they're looking really strong right now. Samuel, such an interesting guy hearing about his story. He's actually uh, Eritrean boy. Yeah, born er in Eritrea. He has the German national champs actually in a few weeks. So, you know, we're talking about how this fits into different people's season. For him, it, it's a perfect timing for a nice little tune-up. So he has the German 10K road championships and then also the German half marathon championships. Uh, Which is where, like, possibly he's the one who has the most favorable racing schedule compared to the rest of his competitors because the other guys up in the front, you got Jared Ward, New York City Marathon, Brian Schrader, New York City Marathon, Parker Stinson, Boston Marathon, like they might be in a 130 mile week trip. Yeah, Samuel, you know, he has a personal best of 28 flat for 10K. So, you know, I think in terms of that percentage, best prize purse, uh, he's going to have a hard time being in that conversation. Definitely one to look for in the overall win. He had a very tough summer, Chris. He actually, he got like a really bad stomach bug at one point and was really hoping to, of course, you know, run some personal best and go to the Olympics and it, it didn't happen. He was really sick. He had to take a lot of time off and is now coming out of that and he says he feels great. This is a much bigger pack than we saw in the women's race as we've got six guys all coming through that second lap in 7.15. Again, for the people tuning in, these are 1.2 kilometer laps. So Donovan Christian of France is up there. Uh, you know, he spent a lot of time on the track this year, primarily running the 5K. Uh, he's run 14 flat for the 5K, uh, but he and 13th at the French National Championships. So, you know, 
the 10K, if you haven't really spent too much time doing it, you've been focused on the 5K, will start to feel really long. Something that I personally was paying attention to today, and it looks like a lot of these athletes have a watch that probably tells them, is that heart rate. Yeah. You know, you have to pay attention and to where your threshold is and kind of stay on the right side of it in the first half. Uh, you don't want to overexert yourself too early. You're not necessarily going to be able to come back. So um, as we are trying to figure out what the pace is going to be like for these athletes and where they're going to settle, the heart rate is a potentially a great way to kind of dictate what that effort should look like. And it looks like the lights have caught up to them. Parker Stinson, Jared Ward, and Samuel Fidley up in the front right now. And the, the pack right behind chasing the white lights is also pretty tight right now too. So in that second lap, they did slow down just a hair. They uh, dropped to about 29.10 pace. And so, you know, the green lights, we said once you left them, you didn't want to ever see them again. They're back. But uh, we're figuring out who's going to take the lead there. Parker still very much in the conversation. Yeah, someone check Dathan Ritzenheit's heart rate right now. Jared Ward gearing up for the New York Marathon. He's done it before numerous times. He's and finished six there. Now, very interesting thing about Jared Ward, who was a guest on the Sidious Bag podcast last week is the approach that he's taking to this one. Like he says, he's played it safe before. He's, he, you know, he's the stats guy, he's the numbers guy. He plays with the, the pace in his head and sticks to one gear and kind of like very much like Des Linden is a metronome. We'll, we'll click him off and plays it safe. We'll, we'll end up picking up people who were too aggressive in that front end of the race, uh, maybe too early on and we'll move up as the race goes on. But he's like, you know what? I want to do something different this time around. I want to get in shape where I'm ready to drop a 440 mile on First Avenue when someone makes a big move and stay with that pack. He's talked, he's thrown it out there. The podium is his goal this time around, which would be fantastic. Jared also said he's just learning the New York, Mar the New York City Marathon yeah. course. And so that's the advantage of kind of doing it again. Again, we were going through the bucket list of the races that he still wants to do, but you want to master one you have to do it a few times. Yeah, he's, he's, he's thrown it out there that Birdland is definitely on his bucket list down the road, but it's sort of like, uh, if you, would you rather, here, here you go, Kyle, would you rather podium at New York City Marathon or clock, you know, a sub 209 at the Berlin Marathon? Yeah, it's tough. You know, I think uh, if you've never run that, that podium race before, getting that, you know, is important, it, especially now with, all of the different courses and options out there uh, and the, the amount of variables that happen in the course of a marathon, it comes down to beating people. That's why we do this. So after lap three, Jared Ward, Sam Fitwe, Parker Stinson, Christensen, Schrader, and Yossi are your top six. Very tight path up in the front. That was a 336, so uh, about you know, a, a hair around 448 pace for a mile. Um, so settling in just a little bit. And, you know, that was the plan. That's what they said that they wanted to do. It's very interesting, too, because, like, for some of these guys, they've run the course maybe once or twice, like, on their warm up, saw a little bit of it yesterday. But each one of them, as the, as the laps go on, are taking a little bit of a different approach on some of these tangents. So it's interesting to see Brian Schrader go wide at one point and the rest of the guys go straight. We saw Jared Ward at the USATF 20K Championships in New Haven uh, just a couple weeks back where he ran 61-21 as a tune-up. And we were talking to him, I mean, you're in the middle of hard, hard training and for him, that was one of those examples of a race in which he had a big mileage week before leading in. You show up on tired legs, but th that's also what the marathon's going to feel like. You know, at the, the t last 10K, you're going to be tired. So in these build-up races, it makes sense to not really back off or taper too much. Uh, it, it's a good way to harden yourself. See someone there has decided to call it after about four laps. Hopefully all good and uh, nothing too long-term, but- I have the same thoughts, buddy. 
We're back, and now it looks like it's Jared and Sam up front with a small gap on the rest of the field. We were speaking with Samuel yesterday who, you know, English is not his first language. And he told us specifically, he said, New Yorkers, you guys are talking too fast. Uh, and so his coach is actually here with him and he's been translating. But it almost feels like, uh, you know, first off I said, your English is way better than my German, so yeah. don't worry about that. Uh, but it's been really cool to get to know him and hear about him. He's so happy to be here. He signed with Saucony in January. And so uh, it's a new brand that for the first time, probably meeting a lot of people here in Essen who he's probably emailed and uh, you know gotten shoes from before. You know, the interesting thing that some people might be wondering is like, oh, so like, what, where was this guy for the Olympics? And like, why was he on like the German Tech Guy team? And unfortunately, he caught like a really bad At salmonella, I like sal yeah. salmonella or like a, a stomach bug that took him to the hospital and he was there for a few weeks. So unfortunately, that really ruined his track season. And so had to shelve that, but he's now really has his eyes on the you know, German nationals for the 10K and a half marathon, but it is isn't that uh, the German cross country championship and, and, and the European championship. He has run 61.56 for a half marathon before. That's quick. So, uh, so, uh, so much potential in his ability to eventually move up to the marathon, which, uh, you know, I'll be excited to see where he debuts, maybe Berlin. The other thing too is sort of like Jared has also run 61 minutes for the half marathon. So we have a very even matchup up in the front of the race right now. They're uh, choosing opposite sides of the railroad track. Don't want to get caught in between on the rail. Jared Ward and Sam Fitwin, 14.27 after lap four. Parker Simpson now starting to, you know, pump the brakes a little bit, 14.34. That was right, a little bit of a slower there. lap, um, about 408, 409. So, uh, you know, dialed back, a, uh, sorry, not 408, 308, sorry. So just about five minute pace, just a hair over. So they're settling in, but those green lights, which are set for 29 flat, still very much in sight. Something that Jared doesn't have to worry about today, fueling. 10K, <laughs> yeah. and just relax. That's and obviously such a big part of marathon training. Hear about him during the 22 mile long runs and practicing that. He's got a little bit of a, about a half step lead on Sam, but that's going to, uh, it's, it's only a tangent here or there. So this race is dead even right now. I'm kind of curious what happens if we get like a photo finish here. It'll be pretty cool. Yeah, with the strobe light in the background. Yeah. Uh, something that we were talking about with the Pace Life guys yesterday was how do you do this? Uh, you know, right. the, in my head it's like, all right, you set the 10K and you set it and there it goes. But you don't actually run exactly a 10K on a 10K right. road course because of the tangents. On my watch, I think I ran 10.31 or something. And so, uh, you know, just a little over that 10K, that true 10K distance, sorry, 6.31. Yeah. Um, and they were saying that basically what you do is you take the total time or the, the and you just divide it by eight and set it. So it, it wasn't as big of a factor as I maybe thought. But this is a lot of lights to have to lay down yeah. over a 1,200 meter loop. This is pushing their inventory for sure. Um, it'll be, I, I saw Jared kind of try and get in front of Pitwe just a little bit of a go, but uh, still neck and neck between the two. Parker was so excited to have the Endorphin Pro Plus with him, uh, especially in that all white. So yeah, so for the people who don't follow Parker on Instagram, one, you're missing out on lots of cool videos of him running shot by a friend of his in the car. That's been his signature move for years, but uh, Parker has always taken the extra step to ask Saucony to customize and send him whatever trainers in all white. He used to get special he, orders, yeah. specifically like in shoes that they did not make in all white, Parker would yeah. ask for. He would, he would bug, I guess, one of the Saucony people about it, and they would, you know, do, the, do him the extra favor. And he uh, finally saw that the Endorphin Pro Plus is going to be all white. The graffiti Saucony logo was the perfect touch. 
And so I kind of dubbed them the Peace City Ones on, uh, in our podcast episode together. And he, he took it and ran with it. And so the Peace City Ones available on September 28th limited drop only 6,000 pairs so there's a link in the YouTube description right now if you haven't done so already check it out put your email down so that you know when they're out and they're gonna go by fast because there's not gonna be a restock of them at all I think right now you know whoever wins the races should get the shoes named after them so right now they're the Grayson ones Five laps in, Jared Ward and Samuel Fitwig, 1803, 1804. They're just a hair under 29 minute pace now. So they've been consistent these last two after going out fast the first one. They've settled in. And I think uh, I, I would expect Jared to maybe want to be grinding down the pace here in these final few laps as he, uh, of course, has those marathon legs and endurance. On our screen there was our man Otto. Uh, going for the world record for a deaf athlete held by himself previously, 30.06. Here we go. Jared is making his move a little bit. I'll tell you what, you know what those corners test of these shoes? The slip and the grip, and they are passing with flying colors right now. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, th there's plenty of slippery uh, parts of this course, some crushed gravel. Uh, even on some turns and you know the women didn't have as a real issue with it or anything and uh, I guess that's a testament to the versatility of the endorphin pro plus so when Jared was talking to me about you know getting ready for someone to drop a 440 mile this is gonna be about that to, to, you know just really pick up the pace and throw down here and kind of simulate that a reminder as you see the different lights on the screen that you know we spoke the green is uh, set for 29 flat the white 2930 the blue 30 flat and the red 31 flat uh, the the ability to have a diversity of paces out there too for the different groups and the athletes going after their respective goals very cool and rare not something that we've seen you know i've seen two done before but never four yeah. Yeah, two is usually, you know, when we've seen it at Diamond Leagues, it's like the world record, and then like if you're in the steeplechase, then in the women's steeplechase, then it's set to nine flat. Uh, and so this is interesting to see that there's a wide range, and goes to show, I guess, what the technology is, is at now, where you can set multiple ones. So as Otto just ran by us, uh, there comes the blue lights set at 30 flat. So he is under that record pace that he is going for, for uh, of 30.06, so looking good. And so the white light, 29.30, there's Parker now. Now he's sitting on it. Dathan can breathe easy a little bit here because I think Dathan gave him permission at most. 29.15 might have been it. Jared is starting to string it out, trying to test, see what Samuel has left here as they approach. Uh, we will see two laps to go when they come through. Now is this another Bluff by Samuel, where he just you know takes a couple steps back, lets lets Jared get a little bit of confidence, and he says, you know what, maybe on the last lap, turn it on a bit, because you know it, it was a little bit quicker than, than we anticipated for him to start. Such a cool shot every time we see it, can't get enough of it. Two laps to go for Jared and Samuel. They are just hugging that green light, right on 29 flat pace, looking good. I think Samuel, uh, you know, was just taking a little breather and he's right back on Jared. It's funny because every time they show that finish line cam, it's Harry Lane from, from the Saucony team who is absolutely losing his mind for each one of these athletes. So uh, really pouring his heart and soul into this race. A lot of the members of the Saucony team here today really getting into it for all of the athletes. Something that I think is really cool about Saucony is that it seems like everyone that we've met who works with the brand is a runner, like a die-hard runner themselves. They, you know, when they're not, you know, slinging shoes out there, they're racing yeah. themselves. Uh, so it, it was, it's been really cool. It wasn't easy for you. It was not easy. No, so they had plenty of good runners themselves uh, on the brand side of things, um, and so it's, uh, it's just cool to see, uh, you know. It's people who get the sport, and that's why we're here today. They understand that this is a really cool opportunity to 
showcase their exciting new product and also put out a stream to tons of people at home who yeah. love watching there's running. There's, there's thousands of you right now. You could be anywhere in uh, on a Wednesday afternoon, but you chose to be here watching some running because, you know, I love track and field. I love track and I love road racing. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I can't get over the atmosphere here, and it's like it, after that women's race, it's it's only carried over and gotten even louder for the men's race right now. Yeah, very excited uh, to see how they go. I'm I'm really hoping that we do have a tight finish because that final straightaway, there'd be plenty of energy with the strobe lights going off. And listen, Jared is is staying right on the the the, the tail end of those pace lights, so he knows what what what. what He's running right now. He's got a step on Samuel now, or at least a few. But we've seen Samuel now yo-yo uh, back and forth a little bit. I think that if he can just get to the point where he's still in touch with a K to go, that he'd have a shot. But this is this is the marathoner right now, just grinding down the pace, just trying to. And this is a, a quick pace for Jared. You yeah. have to think this is significantly faster than marathon pace. He may, you know. Uh, running down First Avenue at some point, run this quick. Yeah. But for the most part, you know, he's not going to average the, the 10K pace. And so this is a, a nice little speed workout for him. I'm sure Coach Ed Eyestone is watching at home right now. I'm pretty pleased to see uh, the shape that Jared has, has been in because, you know, when he's been through this many marathons, not every, you know, race has to be a home run. Uh, he can get away with, you know, taking a couple bad races here and there. What we're seeing tonight is a good one for Jared where, you know, in the grand scheme of things, this is all the cards are, 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 are turned up for Jared at the right time for him to, you know, possibly show out at the New York City Marathon. As we come up with one lap to go, Jared Ward starting to take a slightly more decisive lead here. Into the final lap. Fans are doing the wave. 19 was his split going into the final one. Let's see what he's got in the tank here. Samuel Fitwe battling and trying to hold on along his way to stay on Jared Ward's heels. Jared told, told a, a funny story yesterday at dinner about when he had first joined the team at BYU. He went, they were, they were doing 10 by 1K, and he was having a tough workout, and he thought in the middle of this, you know, I'm going to quit. I've like been thinking about quitting the sport for a really long time, I, you know, and if something makes you want to quit, it might be 10 by 1K. A tough workout, and... He, he goes after the, the workout, and he goes up to his coach, Ed Eyestone, still his coach today, and says, Coach, I, I think I'm going to quit running. And uh, Coach Eyestone didn't get mad or anything. He just said, OK, I understand. Just do me one favor. Just go home and pray about it, knowing that Jared is a religious guy. And Jared said, sure, Coach, I promise. I'll go home and I'll pray about it. And Jared said he goes home, and he, he says, this is going to be easy. And <laughs> he, uh, you know, gets on his knees and says a prayer and I guess God told him he has to keep running. And he's a, he keeps asking him every day when he can stop but the answer is he's got to keep going. He's got to keep going. And what a gift he's giving us here tonight with this performance in the Saucony Fast Future 10K. Staying right on the lights. I think he's going to have one, that last little bit in him to possibly try and just, just beat them by a little bit. Because they're set for 29 flat. Could he could he break that? We'll have to wait and see, and we'll find out very shortly. There's Ash Harrell on our screen from the UK. He has a 10K personal best of 30.18. Digging the tattoos on that arm. I wish I could pull that off. But here is our race leader, Jared Ward, now with about 90 seconds left. He's on the tail end of the green lights. I don't know if it's up front or the back end. Second place, Sam Fitwe. Sam's looking Crouch strong. Be happy about that one, too. It is all Jared Ward right now in the final 400 meters of the Fast Future 10K here in Essen, Germany. He's done eight laps. 
We're just about to be. Uh, now Jared is in the middle of those lights. Could have been the tangent there, but we're about to find out. Can he dip under 29? It's going to be close. And as Jared rounds that corner, everyone is going to see him. Eyes on the clock. Jared Ward, the final tough 90 degree angle turn. He takes it and there's about 200 meters left. He's starting to inch up. Jared Ward, Saucony's own, sporting the Endorphin Pro Plus here in Essen, Germany. We're at the Zeifen World Heritage Site. He's got sub 29 on his mind. Here comes Jared Ward. He cheered on by the good people of Saucony as he breaks the tape. 28.59. It's going to be close. I, I think we'll have to wait and see for the official time, but he might have dipped under and beat out those lights. Samuel Fitwe is going to take second. I think that's Donovan Christian in third. Yep. From France, running out our podium. Remember, there's a, a nice prize purse, $20,000 for those top athletes. For that third place finisher, Christian spent most of the time on the track in the 5K. Ran a 14 flat personal best on June 11th and then was 13th at the French National Championships, takes third. And here, here comes today. Parker in 29.50. He's got 10 minutes now before he has to do it all over again. And Otto, 29.57. That is the deaf world record, getting under his own personal best. That is awesome to see. 27 years old from Sweden. I'm going to trade duties with Kyle and have him conduct the interview with Jared once we get through our final finishers. These athletes all have gotten a chance to know each other really well if they hadn't raced each other before. Hanging out all week, cheering each other on. Jared Ward, the nicest guy in the field. The first one there to congratulate everybody. And there's our man John on screen. Pretty solid performance for, for John. I think he was trying to tip under close to 31. He's, he's probably immediately turned and asking, did my brother do it? And he's going to be very happy to hear that he did. There's your champion, Jared Ward. Getting high fives from the Saucony. Higher ups. Higher ups. Good job, Jared. This is why we love you. And I guess the. So that does it for the uh, the Saucony Fast Future 10K men's race. We we had a good one on our hands. It was as kind of we we thought going to be Samuel Fitwe versus Jared Ward, and Jared Ward prevails. Getting ready for the New York City Marathon. Things are looking up, I would say. Yeah, really good race for him, and also Sam as he looks towards the German National Championships. So. Uh, it was just an exciting race, really fun event to be a part of, just a celebration of the sport. There's so such good energy with the brand right now. We got a little bit of sneak peek of the things that are coming in the next year or two, and uh, there's, there's a lot of big things happening. I will go through the results as Kyle makes his way over to interview Jared. Your winner, Jared Where's Ward Jared? in 28.58. Samuel Fitwe, the German favorite, the hometown favorite here. 29.10. He's run his 10K PR on the track in Essen and now puts together a runner-up finish here in the Fast Future 10K. Dougie Musson, 29.18 for third place. Tom Erling Carbo from Norway, 29.22. Parker Stinson, 29.50. Otto Kingstead, 29.56.
Ishmael Seacott, 30-24. And Yannick Arbogast, 30-37 in eighth place. Got some more results here flashing on the screen. Ash Harrell, 30-38. Pacom uh, Tibolt Lopez, 30-42. Andreas Bochta, 30-42. John Kingstead, 30-55. Then we've got a couple other finishers. We're a couple laps behind. What a fun night here in Essen, Germany. Absolute blast. Waiting for Kyle to get this interview with Jared as Jared kind of makes his way over so we can hit the beer garden. You know, we haven't ruled out the fact that Kyle and I could do a shoey in the Endorphin Pro Plus if this video you smash that subscribe button and we surpass, you know, the next thousand mark of subscribers. We'll do a shoe in. We'll post the, the video on, uh, on our Instagram. So hit that subscribe button, smash the link to reserve your pair of the Saucony Endorphin Pro Plus. I'm wearing them right now. They're a hit. I'll be wearing them in Chicago. Uh, so a good time here in Essen, Germany. We're still not, I don't think Jared has made his way totally over to Kyle yet. Be sure to hit the like button, smash the subscribe button. We've got more cool things down the line on the Sidious Mag YouTube channel. You enjoyed the track meets that we broadcast earlier in the year. This was a little bit different. We did a road race, tested a couple of new innovative things out like the uh, wave light technology. And we're going to continue to push the sport you, forward Chris. with some in innovation. John now here we've with got our men's race Kyle winner, Jared. Jared Ward. He just ran 28.58 in Essen, Germany at the Zeifen World Heritage Site. Jared, how did that feel? Dude, it was tough. That's a tough pace for a marathoner. <laughs> well, I saw the pace lights were with you the whole time. 29 flat was the time that you had in your mind. You just dipped under. Are you happy with that time? Yeah, super happy. You know, it's fun running with pace lights. You just for me, I just tried to relax and keep the lights right there, and I, I think it helped keep me relaxed. But yeah, super happy with it. I've, you know, I remember uh, Ben Bruce once said to me, "Anytime you break 29 for a 10k, it's an okay day." And so I'm, I'm very happy with it. I think it bodes well for New York this fall. And what a fun event! I mean, for Saucony to do something like this and bring together this quality of people. I mean, I've just had a blast this this whole few days in Germany. Yeah, so obviously we're here celebrating the Endorphin Pro Plus release that's coming September 28th. How did the shoes feel? Dude, they're fast. <laughs> you know, it's, some of these turns were a little bit tight. The shoes are a little bit taller, but I think they corner pretty well. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm very happy with it. You know, I'll be wearing this shoe in New York for sure. And, um, you know, just so proud to be a part of a brand with an innovation team like this. It's awesome. Yeah, how special is it to be a part of the process of, you know, testing out the shoes, giving feedback? You've been with the brand for years now, uh, since you graduated college, I believe. And so, you know, you got to meet everyone here with the brand. What's that like as an athlete from your perspective? It's awesome. There's not another brand, running brand in the world, in, from my perspective, that's like this. You know, I get to hang out with our president, our CMO, you know, the, and these, the senior leadership is awesome, but the product team is pretty fun. I, you know, I, I get to email Andrea often, work with Chris, um, and, you know, out at BYU testing shoes on the treadmill. And so super, super blessed to be able to be a part of this brand in a number of aspects that I'm passionate about. Yeah, so you know, you're you're a running nerd, you're a shoe guy like myself. Being part of a brand with such history that's been around for so long and then still values the running industry, the run specialty, what is that like? It's got to be special, uh, you know, it's a family brand in so many ways. Sure, I mean, I ran in Saucony's in high school and they were my shoe of choice and so um, so, so blessed and excited when I came out of college and was talking with Saucony. It was like a dream. So I know uh, Parker right now is going to do another 10K. Are you jumping into that <laughs> workout? I told him that I might try to do like a couple miles with him just to keep him going. So in fact, I was thinking of that with a mile to go in this run. I thought, oh, I'm pretty tired. Hopefully that 10 minutes is a good break. Do you find that the recovery is a little bit different in the, the new shoes? Uh, you know, t tomorrow, how does that feel? I'm going to feel pretty good tomorrow. I mean, it's a, you know, the, the aerobic system recovers pretty quick. And with these shoes, legs recover pretty quick. So, I, you know, I expect that tomorrow I'll be running, you know, teens in the miles for 
for mileage for a few days recovering and then right back into marathon training. Have you been to Germany before? This is kind of a special event yeah. to come out. First time, first time. And tomorrow I head down to Stuttgart to visit a good, one of my best friends from high school. Um, so excited to be in Germany, you know, a country with so much history for so long that I've always wanted to come to. So pretty special. Great, Jared. Well, we're obviously going to see you at the New York City Marathon in November. Any races between now and then? No, just training, Kyle. All right, we'll get back to it. Jared, thank you so much. Go jump in with Parker. He needs some help. It's, <laughs> it's a team sport. Thanks, man. Have a good one. Chris, back to you in the studio. All right, everyone. I think that does it. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Saucony Fast Future 10K here on the City of Spag YouTube channel. Again, smash the link in the description to get your hands on a pair of these awesome new shoes. And we'll see you next time here on the City of Spag YouTube channel. Thanks so much for tuning in.